Um, what did you learn from the Missouri game? Well, I think I, I learned more this week than I learned during the game. You know, I think one, one thing that was um, really evident to me is that we weren't going to let Missouri beat us twice, you know, meaning when we came back on, on Monday, we were ready to work and, and, and prepare and move forward. And it was disappointing. Um, you know, we made some, some – we all could have been better. You know, it starts with me, and we all could have been better. And, and uh, unfortunate the way things uh, shook down at the end because I do firmly believe we're a better football team. Um, but the only actions matter, right? So um, what happened happened, and, and I, I just learned that we have a pretty resilient crew that cares a lot about what they're doing. Why do you think they had so much success throwing the ball deep on you? Well, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. Part of it was uh, um, part of it was an experience, um, and because I don't know if there was anything that really caught us by surprise in terms of what they did or any pictures that we hadn't seen in our past. We may not have repped them a whole bunch of times that week, but I think it was all pictures that we'd seen. And we were in we were in relatively safe calls based defense. And, um, you know, I just think guys were pretty, you know, sometimes you have conflict guys, right? Guys that are part of the run fit, but also are supposed to help overlap in the play action pass. And I think sometimes our, our conflict guys got a little bit juiced up to get into the run fit a little quickly and, and um, got left some one-on-one -on -one matchups over the top and we weren't able to win them. So, um, and it's just incredible that it happened over and over again. You know, uh, sometimes that happens. For it to happen four times in a game is, is rare. And uh, um, hopefully we get the lesson learned there. On the long run play, I think you guys got caught in man-to-man. -man. Yeah, we were, we, were in a, we were in a pressure and, um, um, you know, we, we kind of uh, got out of a gap and, yeah, it, it, it got us and, and we weren't able to knock it down with the, with the post player and, and that's how it ended up getting, getting out. But the way to rectify that, you've got other guys in position that, that should have been able to, to get where they needed to be to make the stop? Yeah, I think there was a, a um, you know, and I, again, I'm not putting any of it on the players. It's, it's, it's me and it's us as coaches that we've got to get that stuff cleaned up. But I thought sometimes our angles to the ball were, were um, left something to be desired. I think sometimes we took some um, I don't know, lazy angles, you know, and not, not lazy in terms of us not running, but lazy in terms of um, just kind of sloppy up the field angles and balls got cut back across our face several times. And um, what, what could have been minimal damage plays turned into, turned into bigger ones. I think they're incredibly explosive, um, and I think uh, they they do a good job of doing what they do. I mean, I don't think they deviate a whole lot from uh, from their history. Whether you know they've played, I think when you run the quarterback as much as they do, you're going to get quarterbacks banged up. And they've played with multiple quarterbacks in the past, uh, and really didn't change much from what they uh, typically would do. Um, but explosive in the past game, they do a lot of things to try to get one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups on the outside. I know they have an RPO element. Um, sometimes it's based on access. Sometimes it's based on um, numbers in the box. I know they run the quarterback a lot, which is a challenge when you combine the, the RPO with the quarterback run. Um, and a lot of good athletes, you know, and, and an experienced group up front of guys that maybe are, are haven't spent their entire time at UCF, but guys that have been all conference players in other leagues or um, have transferred in from different institutions and are, and are playing at a high level. Good, good, really good offensive football team. Since the defensive game plan change with Daniel Green out and Jake Clifton out there at linebacker. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to do what we do. Um, ultimately, we've got to put people in positions to be successful. And, you know, Daniel's a big piece of that just because of his experience and because of, his, you know, his ability. Um, but we have guys that are capable to do the things that we're asking them to do. I'm excited for Austin Romaine and, and the challenge that he has. And, you know, he's earned this, you know, since he got on campus in the, in the wintertime. And uh, went through spring practice. We knew he was a good football player with a lot of instincts. And um, physically, I, you know, I think he's pretty mature for his age. And he's flanked by two of our better football players, you know, Austin Moore and, and Des Purnell, who are, I think, sensational and will help him and help keep him grounded throughout this whole thing. And um, will help him in some of the communication and some of that stuff also. Does Austin Moore pick up more duties in communication? Yeah, you know, um, the funny thing, it, it, kind of a blessing in disguise this week, is, is, is because of the tempo that UCF operates at. I don't know how much communication there's really going to be, um, but uh, 
Uh, certainly, both those guys will have to help. Kobe Savage will have to help. Guys that have played a lot of football are going to have to help pick up the slack. And uh, it's still going to ultimately lie in Austin Romaine's lap. Um, but I think he'll have a lot of good counsel around him. How's uh, Javon Banks progressed? Um, he's gotten he's 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 doing a good job for us. You know, I think I think sometimes for us that Noah's position is a little bit of a unsung hero. Um, but you know. He's a big factor in the pass rush, as we saw last week, and, and we've known that since he got here. He's just got so much twitch and um, ability to, I don't know, lack of a better term, be slippery. Um, and I think the, the three-headed monster that we've got at Noah's right now with him and Uso and Damian Alalio is, is, is really, really formidable. Anything else? Was there a certain yardage spot on the field you were definitely trying to keep Missouri away from on that last drive? Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be uh, quite where it was, but um, you know, I, I I think we started to get a little bit tighter once they got around the fifty, and uh, you know, we had a couple of uh, alignment errors at the end there that uh, maybe gave them a couple of dink and dunk things that got them a little closer than I would have liked. Um, it was interesting how how patient they were in the beginning of that drive, and uh, and then you know, really we didn't give up any of the explosives, uh, and uh, it just. Uh, but I always kind of have in my head, you know, I go through it with, with Chili Davis, our, our special teams coordinator, every week, kind of what, what is that line? And then I always kind of extend it five yards beyond that. So I was kind of thinking if we could keep them behind the 40, we'd be in pretty good shape. And, and it turned out not to be, not to be accurate.